Hello, in this video we will talk about the key components of crystal oscillator design. You power up your crystal oscillator and you notice a signal on the oscilloscope confirming that there is oscillation. Is this enough for good design? Not quite. Let's take a look at the oscillation fundamentals. Shown here is the crystal oscillation circuit. It is generally comprised of a CMOS inverter, a feedback resistor, both of which are generally included in the microcontroller unit, and the quartz crystal. The quartz crystal can also be expressed by its electrical equivalent as a series RLC circuit in parallel with a shunt capacitance as shown here. The third image shows the equivalent circuit of the crystal and the oscillation circuit. On the crystal side, we have the effective inductance and the effective resistance, also known as ESR. On the oscillation circuit side, we have the load capacitance, which is the capacitance which is measured across the crystal's terminals. Crystal manufacturers usually specify a load capacitance to set the crystal's intended operating frequency. Varying this load capacitance will vary the fundamental frequency of the crystal. The negative resistance is also called as oscillation allowance, and it is listed as a negative value. Let us look at the factors that could possibly affect the oscillation conditions. For sustained oscillations to occur, two conditions must be met. The closed loop gain must be equal to unity, and the closed loop phase is equal to zero or an integral of 2n pi. The oscillation conditions then translate to the equations shown here. Load capacitance plays an important role in that it controls the operating frequency of the crystal. It can be calculated using the formula shown here, where CS is the parasitic capacitance from the PCB. For optimum performance, an oscillator circuit must be designed in such a way to enhance the negative resistance or oscillation allowance. For reliable circuit operation, it is recommended that the negative resistance is at a minimum five times or more the maximum resistance value of the crystal. For oscillator circuits used in the automotive applications, we recommend 10 times the value. There are three important specifications to keep in mind when considering a crystal. The frequency, the drive level, and the negative resistance. What makes these specifications important? Let's delve into the details. First up is the operating frequency of the crystal. The operating frequency is dependent on the load capacitance. The graph shown here depicts the deviation of the operating frequency from its set value with change in the load capacitance. Your crystal manufacturer will specify the value of the load capacitance to be used to achieve the desired operating frequency. Deviating from this value will cause the frequency to shift as well. Next up, we have the negative resistance. The oscillator circuit must be designed to enhance the negative resistance for reliable performance. To calculate the negative resistance, start by adding a variable resistor in series with the crystal, power up the oscillator, and monitor the output on an oscilloscope. Starting with the lowest setting of the variable resistor, gradually increase the resistance. Note the change in output on the oscilloscope with the increase in resistance. When the oscillation comes to a stop, Note the value of the variable resistor. Add this to the maximum resistance value of the crystal and you have the negative resistance value. As a general rule of thumb, this value should at a minimum be greater than five times the value of the maximum resistance of the crystal to achieve reliable oscillations. Lastly, we come to the drive level. This is the amount of power consumed by the crystal while in use. Quartz crystals have a specific maximum value of drive level that influences the frequency of the oscillator. Exceeding this specified value could result in unstable oscillations, changes in operating frequency, and also affects the ESR. Drive level is calculated by measuring the drive current through the crystal and calculating it using the formula I square multiplied by the ESR. While designing your oscillator circuit, Ensure that the crystal is oscillating at the desired frequency. The oscillation allowance is greater than or equal to five times the maximum resistance value of the circuit. And the drive level is within specification. 
Thank you for watching. For further inquiries, contact Epson.